lights of Manhattan lead to only one place, and we're talking about the historic landmark Roseland Ballroom. We're here to bring you boxing tonight, all this and more as we prepare to swing on the star. And another cordial welcome to Star Boxing. I'm your host, Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal, joined as I always am by our boxing analyst, the amazing Randy Gordon. You know, Randy, one of the things that's going on in New York that's just really blowing my mind is the dance rooms are becoming boxing rooms, and the boxing rooms are becoming dance rooms. Recently, I was out at Jamaica Arena, which is now the Amazora Ballroom for dancing, and of course, here we are at Roseland, which is becoming a mecca for boxing. Why? There's a number of other places around the country. Down in Louisville, there's a place they say the ghost of Enrique Caruso haunts the place, and they've had a lot of boxing in there because they're big, they're cavernous, they hold things like press conferences and proms, and now it's pugilistic. It's a great place for boxing. Well, we're going to have a lot of great boxing here tonight at Roseland, and we'll be back with our first bout on Star Boxing after these words. All right, back at ringside, Artie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Randy Garden getting ready right now for a schedule four-rounder. Very interesting matchup, Bronx versus Bronx. And uh, so it's going to be the king of the Bronx when it's all finished. But we're going to find out more about these pugilists. Maybe we won't. I'm trying to get his attention. We're going to find out more from these pugilists. From our ring count announcer, Gene Stone. Heavyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action from New York City, Jimmy Santa. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10 point must system will be George Cologne, Julie Letterman, and Luis Rivera. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing white, weighing 198 pounds, his professional record. One victory coming by way of knockout with one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Bronx, New York, presenting the 1999 New York Golden Gloves champion, known as the New York City Kid, Punchin' Pants. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing black and white, Weighs in at 192 and one half pounds. His professional record, one victory coming by way of knockout with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from the Bronx, New York, presenting the 2001 New York Golden Gloves champion, Newton K. Good evening, gentlemen. I want you to listen to me at all times. Let's touch gloves and have a good, clean fight. Go ahead. Go. All right. Do not blink. Don't blink. Don't go to the fridge. Don't do a thing. Okay, Bronx versus Bronx. And Randy, interestingly enough, on the fight facts, for some reason, they list... Patrick Nwamu as a southpaw, and now he is a southpaw. <laughs> he was <laughs> a moment ago. That's why they did it. Look at this morning, he came out orthodox. <laughs> Nwamu is in the white. Newton Kidd in the black. We have two Golden Gloves champions there. In addition, Nwamu won the Golden Gloves down in Georgia in 98. A lot of amateur experience here. Nwamu lost his second pro fight this past June to Russell Shiflett, lost a split decision down in Atlantic City. Said he got jobbed, which was 
what we might have expected him to say. But I said, what'd you learn from it? He says, not to go to New Jersey. I have learned over the years that when you ask a guy about that last loss, they never say, oh, he, he trashed me. Won every single round. They always say, split decision, hometown decision. Kind of looping right hand. Pace is actually a little slower than I thought it would be at this point. I thought they would just come out flinging at each other, but switching again. I knew it wasn't me. Back to the orthodox style right now is Patrick Nuwamu. And Newton Kidd laying back. He wants to see what's going on in there. This is a real chess match. A lot of thinking going on in there. And now switching again. Got caught in the switch up. Nuwamu making a big mistake. This lefty righty, lefty righty, Randy. Marvin he Hagler. being cute. A long time ago, Marvin Hagler in the gym once showed me how to switch up. He said, you don't step forward, you step back. If you step forward, you're going to get nailed and not cold. Well, both fighters with big punching power. Both possess one knockout on their records. Newton Kidd, of course, undefeated. His one win, a first-round knockout of Evard Ramage this past June. And we're under a minute to go here in the first. And now coming from the southpaw stance and switching back to righty, though, and getting caught in the switch-up again. Patrick Nawamu. Both guys very tight. Got to loosen up. Also got to wonder why both guys would take this fight at this point in their career. I mean, we got to kudos to our matchmaker. But at the same time, their management. Why would you have the two Golden Gloves champions fighting each other at this point in their career, Randy? Quite frankly, if I'm in either one's corner, I wouldn't. But Jim Borzella, our matchmaker, did a great job. He convinced somebody somewhere along the way. Great, great match. And well, Newton Kidd's never been into the second round. We'll see how he likes it when we come back. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's star boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. Well, as we start round number two, familiar face in the corner of Patrick Nawamu, former undisputed middleweight champion in the world, Vito Antifermo. A throwback to yesterday's fighter. Heart, heart, and more heart. Blood, blood, and more bleeding. Ah, there was more heart than blood. But One some of the, the great stories, though, about the work he had done on his forehead to stop the cuts. He had a lot and of right now, surgery. Jim Santa having the, his work cut out for them is... Fighters getting a little sloppy on the inside, and once again, fighting orthodox is Nuwamu. Randy, tough first round to score. Very tough round to score. I, I thought that Nuwamu won it by a hair. I don't like scoring even rounds. I give it to Nuwamu. And I thought Kid pulled it out by a hair, so yeah. this is going to be interesting. Again, we're only scheduled for four rounds. Kid already in uncharted waters. The fact that he's never been into the second round, and this is second pro fight. Nuwamu has been three rounds and four rounds respectively on the winning and losing ends. See, I love when it's close like this and it goes down to a decision. You love watching how the judges score it. When I was commissioner in New York, I used to keep the t running total of every single score that a judge scored. I could tell you how many times he was on the short end of a split decision. Patrick Nuwamu wanted me to tell everybody that his nickname is Punching Pat, the New York City Kid. So I just did. That's too long to put on his shorts. Really? And I said, wait a minute, it's not that whole thing, is it? Is it the New York City Kid? He said, no, it's Punching Pat, the New York City Kid. He also has a love for Italy. He's of Nigerian descent, but I asked him, how come you had that long layoff from your pro debut in November of, of Y2K and then didn't fight again until June? And he said, I went to Italy for six months. I said, to do what? He said, just to hang out. I said, well, I don't want to typecast you. I said, but I don't know a lot of guys from the Bronx to go to Italy to chill. That's exactly the word he used. He said, I went to Italy to chill. 
I guess to celebrate that first knockout loss, but he lost a little bit of the momentum because he came back and lost that decision after that. And right now, eating a few combinations from Newton Kidd. As the two Golden Glove champions continue, and one more time, Patrick Nuamu now in the southpaw stance. And I see some blood on the right eye of Newton Kidd. You see a lot of blood there, actually, Randy. Bad cut as those heads were coming together on the inside. And I haven't seen Jim Santa signal at all that it was caused by an unintentional headbutt. If indeed it was. Well, we need to find out the official. Because if, in fact, it stopped, this fight has stopped, and it wasn't an unintentional headbutt, then, of course, Nuwama would win by a TKO. We're going to try to get Jim Santa between rounds to give us the official decision on Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. All right, second half of the schedule four rounder. And once again, the man in the white shorts switching from lefty to righty stance, that's Patrick Nwamu. Golden Gloves champion in Georgia, 98, 99 in New York, having his hands full right now with Newton Kidd. He's in the black with the white stripe. Nobody's been on the floor thus far. Randy, what's going on with that cut? Which is, of course, called an unintentional headbutt. Well, they, they worked on it. I don't see it open right now. And he has come out with a sense of urgency and desperation. He just jumped all over Nuwamu to start the round. Well, I, I think a part of that's not understanding the rules. Well, maybe he feels if he lost the first two rounds and it went to the cards because of that, uh -huh. that he could lose this fight. And that's exactly what happens. If the cut gets bigger and he cannot continue because it was ruled an accidental headbutt, they will go to the scorecards and rule it a technical decision. Whoever is in the lead. You know what drives me crazy? When you go to a decision and it takes a half hour to get the score. For a four-round fight. What are, what are they? I, when I was... Commissioner of New York, I used to do the scorecards. I never in seven years had a hesitation. The fight was over. We added it up. 10 plus 10 plus 9 and so forth. And What do they do? No calculator? <laughs> no calculator. I use my toes. There you go. Well, you talk about going to the cards here, Randy. This is a very close fight and a tough one to score. You and I didn't agree on the first round. How would you score the second round? Nuwamu. Which I did as well. I've got the fight dead even after two and a very even third round here maybe a slight edge to Newton Kidd and as I say that he eats two right hands from the orthodox stance of Patrick Nuwamu now if I'm in the corner of Nuwamu I tell him to move box because Newton Kidd is diving in just diving in begging to be hit by the jab you know, one of the things, Patrick Nuamu told us he was self-managed yesterday, and we questioned him as to why, and he gave us, you know, sort of a, a gray interpretation. But here's some of the things that happen to a fighter when he is self-managed. He finds himself in a fight against another young undefeated fighter, another Golden Gloves champion, and it, this is a fight that neither one of them should have at this point in their career. Much too tough. Exactly. A manager. Okay, you're a manager. Would you have allowed this fight? No. Absolutely not. Why? You want a fighter that's going to go in and learn. And, you know, you want him in, not in ridiculously easy fights, but you don't want two Golden Gloves fighters, two New York Golden Gloves champions meeting this early in their career. They are mauling each other. It's, it's bad decision-making for them. Good TV for us. Well, fourth and final round in the Battle of the Bronx in the Battle of the Two Golden Gloves champions. Nobody's been down thus far in the fight. White shorts, that's Patrick Nwamu. Black shorts with the gold, with, excuse me, with the gray stripe. Newton Kidd. 
Oh, what a fight this one's turning into. All oh, hard. Incredible fight, and you don't really see these kind of matchups this early on, and we keep dwelling on that. Yep, I've got one for you. Tell 1976, me. right out of the Olympics, one of the great matchmakers, Hall of Famer Teddy Brenner, tried to match up in their professional debut, Howard Davis against Sugar Ray Leonard. Both sides thought about it, but only for a second. Both sides said, thanks, but no thanks. At Madison Square and Garden. And history went on from there. Yeah. It would have been an outstanding fight because Howard Davis came out of the Olympics as good as any fighter I have ever seen. Well, other strange things out of the Olympics. Pete Rademacher in his first pro fight fighting Floyd Patterson for the heavyweight yeah. championship of the world and dropping Patterson. I guess you could say Leon Spinks after seven pro fights fighting Muhammad Ali and winning the title. To me, that's still one of the that's one of the biggest upsets of all time. And and right now, making that transition from the Golden Gloves to the pros, it's just it's a very tough thing. But it's made a great fight for us. Absolutely, and anybody watching this has to appreciate what they're seeing here. Great conditioning, a lot of heart on the part of both guys. I think Newton looks to be wearing down a little bit. He's stepping back, taking some deep breaths. Very sloppy is right now Nawamu, dropping those hands, keeping his chin up in the air. And not a double jab in the house. Oh, look how sloppy he's getting now. I just mentioned fatigue on the part of Kidd. I think now the fatigue is on the other side of the ring, the man in the white trunks. And a very tough fight to score. i got to tell you, I've got it up two rounds for Kidd coming into this. You've got it. A shutout. Nope. No, you got a two to one the other way. Right. I got it one point in favor of Nuwamu. So that cut right eye never was a factor. Well, Nuwamu one more time doing his patented switch, and this time doing it the way you described, Bernie. He moved backwards. And as he made the move backwards, he went lefty to righty. That's the only way to do it. You can't step forward. You got to put your foot back. Getting some good leverage on that right hand. And we got under 30 seconds to go in the fight. Still nobody down, miraculously. Nawamu looks down at us as if to say, how much time did you say is left? They have been at it like this all night long. And a good job, by the way, by Jim Santa in this fight. He's yes. been a very tough, this is a tough fight to referee. This is how to referee this kind of fight. Let him go at it. Cut over the right eye. They did a great job in the corner of Newton Kidd. The cut has never been a factor. No, it hasn't. And that's the end of the fight. You and this what? is going to be very interesting. I don't even know how to score that last round, but Randy Kidd might have actually pulled it out. I think he did. And I've got the fight 39-37. You've got it dead even, right? Even. Well. 38-38. That's going to make the scoring even more interesting. Except you and I don't count. That's by the name of. But we're definitely a good barometer. Luis Rivera, Georgie Colon. And Julie Letterman, they are the ones who count tonight. Julie Letterman, of course, the daughter of the perhaps one of the more famous judges in the country, Harold Letterman. Harold recently retired from judging regular fights and, of course, is exclusive now to HBO. Just a terrific guy and a pharmacist. And I am one of the biggest defenders. Anybody says a, a woman doesn't belong at ringside, Julie knows more about boxing than most guys I've ever run into. Julie has been going to fights since she's a baby. As she a, knows every, she could probably name every champion. And I remember the first time I met Harold, I met Julie at the same time. Julie was at every fight he ever went to. All over the country he would bring her. No, she knows her stuff. There's definitely no problem there. I'm telling you, New York State Athletic Commission rolled out the A crew for this one. So we're gonna have a good decision. No matter which way it goes, the A crew is giving you the scores. Well, our, the promoter of Star Boxing, Joe DeGuardia, is from the Bronx. And the fact that he could pull off a Bronx versus Bronx upset with these two guys and put this kind of match together, we have to applaud Star Boxing on this one. This was an outstanding battle. And as you mentioned, Randy, it's taking for a four-round fight, though, taking a lot of time with the addition. That always tells me there's a split decision or majority decision, and they start checking it over and over again. All right. Well, it looks like Dean Stone is getting ready How right now. <laughs> After four rounds of action here at the Roseland, New York City, New York, we go to the scorecard. Judge Luis Rivera has it even 38-38. However, that score 
is overrode by the following two scores, 39-37 for Jorge Colon, and Judge Julie Letterman has it 40-36 to for your winner by majority decision, Punchin' Pat! Well, judges all over the place on this one. One judge seeing it even, 38-38, the same as our Randy Gordon. Then two judges, 39-37, and Julie Letterman, a shutout. Not giving even one round to Newton Kidd. And the winner, by majority decision, Patrick Nawamu. He will improve to 2-1, and one, dropping down to 500 at 1-1. One and one, That would be Newton Kidd. Randy Gordon's going to try to be with the winner when we come back. Stay with us. More boxing on the star. Inside of Roseland Ballroom, I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Randy Gordon is with the winner, Patrick Nawamu. Take it away, Randy. Patrick Nawamu, that was not an easy fight, was it? No, sir. I knew he was going to be tough, and I had to suck it up. He's a champion. Arnie and I were both talking before. If you were your manager, yes. which you yourself managed, if you really have to make that decision, if there's another manager out there, if you're managing a fighter, Yes. Would you put yourself in this kind of tough fight this early in your career? I don't see why not. Um, they're going to get tough sooner or later. So if I start out tough like this, I feel that it'll only get easier. That's just my theory. I could be wrong. Okay, you just taught me something there. You know, maybe it should be. Yeah. Uh, he was real tough in there. When you cut him in the second round, that was an accidental headbutt, wasn't it? No, I punched him. What did you catch him with? I caught him with a left. I believe it was a left. But uh, we didn't clash heads at all. You know, you were looking real sharp, I thought, for the first three rounds. The third round, I thought you were starting to run out of a little bit of gas, and you are getting a little bit of sloppy lunging with your left jab. Back yeah. to the gym? I just have to, I'm, I'm a new jack. I have to keep practicing, and I'm sure I'll get a little better. I got Vito Antifermo, Ray Velez, and my personal first cousin favorite, uh, Chuck Nuamu, and they're all in my corner. I got Rocky Oliveri and uh, Johnny Chacha advising me. I'm happy. I'm happy, and I have a lot of fans from New York. For your next fight, number one, how soon do you want to get back in the ring? Uh, as soon as Joe DeGuardia gets me in there. How soon do you want to get back in the ring? One month. One month? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Would you like a fight just as tough as this one? Uh, uh, that, that, that said it right there. We'll think about that. <laughs> Maybe so. 80% yes. You know. Give yourself a report card tonight. I give myself a 7.5 out of 10. Because, just because I stayed in there with him. He was a champion. He was a champion. Well, Newton Kidd certainly was a champion, but Patrick Nuwamu was in his face all night long, pulled out a majority decision to up his record to 2-1. We'll be seeing a lot more of him. Let's go back to ringside. We'll be seeing a lot more of this guy, too, Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. And again, improving to 2-1, and one, Patrick Nuwamu. He didn't think it was a headbutt. He says it's from a glove that caused the cut on Newton Kidd. Either way, good victory for him and a very well fought. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. Star Boxing has been brought to you tonight by City Life Hotel Group. Check them out online at www.stayinnewyork.com and by Antonovich Furs. Ah, Antonovich. Back live at ringside at the legendary Roseland Ballroom, Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Randy Gordon. And Randy, I've got to say, the room did live up to expectations. Absolutely did. I mean, we've seen, as we mentioned in our open, a lot of this ballrooms becoming fight arenas, fight arenas becoming ballrooms. And uh, tonight, I think that uh, certainly Roseland, where it's known for its dancing, the dancing was done in the ring. No question about it. These guys were rumbling, and uh, they were boxing, they were dancing, they were doing a lot of things in there. Pugilistica, it was great. 
All right, for Randy Gordon, I am Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Good night, Carrie. I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs>